Live from San Francisco. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Q. Covering Oracle Open World 2015. Brought to you by Oracle. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Brian Grace Lee. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in San Francisco on Howard Street. This is the set of theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program, where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. Joe my host, Brian Grace, Wikibon analyst at wikibon.com. Our next guest is Ganesh Ramurthy, senior uh, vice president of product development Oracle for the engineered systems in one of the most exciting areas I think that's out there right now. We're going to hear more about it this week, but we got a little teaser from John Fowler. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Um, Happy so to be here. My first question is, um, the world is moving to a horizontally scalable open source world, as Mark Hurd pointed out. Sure. But vertically integrated solutions also are kind of in there. They're not mutually exclusive. Sure. Really big point mm -hmm. to get that efficiency. Absolutely. Total cost of ownership is probably one of the biggest things that will be discussed over the next 24 months. That's right. With cloud. That's right. What's yeah. your take on this? vertically integrated, horizontally scalable environment we live in. Yeah, so what, what as a vendor, what we want to be providing is solutions with sort of infrastructure solutions which fits into both spaces. There are some applications which are vertically scale applications, some applications are horizontally scale applications. And you want to design the processor, the server, the systems around a flexibility so that you can scale to both sides of the needs actually. So that's, that's what I would expect, uh, and that's what we, we would try so, to achieve. So at wikibon.com, the research all points to one yeah. common theme we see across all verticals, yep. all markets. Yep. Customers want more. They sure. want more cores, they want more low latency, that's right. they want that's more right. cash, that's they right. want more in memory. Essentially, they want nirvana, right? So more for less. I mean, how hard is it to do that? You guys are doing some things. Share some insight into what you guys are building sure. specifically to address that concern because the speed of development right. is what they want. Sure, sure. So it's a really good question actually. So uh, clearly everybody wants more for less, more performance, more security, and more efficiency gains, all basically at a less, less cost point at the end of the day. So, and they want, in the cloud space, they want agility so that they can put in new services on the fly, get things going, change as the dynamics change dynamically on the, on the fly. So you want to build infrastructures which sort of fit into those sort of needs. And today we just introduced a range of systems based on a new technology around the Spark M7 silicon. And Spark with a C, not to be confused with Spark with a K, with a which C, is the that's right. in memory open source that's Apache right, that's project. That's right, that's right. In Spark fact, as the old Sun Spark. That's right, the Sun Spark <laughs> version of this stuff. In fact, uh, I can talk to you about the Spark on Spark yeah, we'll, story. Yeah. We can get to that in, in a little bit of time. But basically, the uh, Spark M7 processor technology, which we introduced, and then we introduced a set of servers and engineered system around that stuff brings in certain new capabilities which just doesn't exist in the industry at this point in time, right? So if you kind of look at the current situation, right? Performance, everybody wants more performance for less. That's kind of a given, granted thing. Everybody wants higher efficiency. But security has become a number one concern in customers, yeah. mind, right? End-to-end -end um, security. Yeah, so end-to-end -end security has become extremely important. So, you know, enough of security violations that it's become number one concern, yeah. right? So our industry is sort of struggling to address those particular security needs of our customers and be there with the customers in terms of that stuff. What we have looked at on the technology front, on the product front is that, how do we make security simple and easy for customers to adopt? How do we make sure that security comes at no additional cost for customers? So let me give you an example today. So, um, if, I, if a customer wants to turn on security, let's say encryption in the database or in the application tier or the communication tier, they will basically have to decide which specific columns of my tables do I have to encrypt, which specific communication path do I have to encrypt because it costs a lot of CPU cycles, costs a lot of performance. So you have to trade off between performance and security all the time when it comes to the so what we wanted to do was to take away that compromise. 
so that he gets security at maximum performance with this technology. So John Fowler and then Larry Ellison, yesterday's keynote, talked about always on security. Always on security. Right. John Fowler's like, you have to read a white paper to get security. Now you have to right. read a white paper to turn off security. That's right. So your vision with Oracle is always on security. That's right. What does that mean? I mean, native security? I mean, because we all know, I mean, first of all, we'd love to talk about sure. things being dead, being sure. uh, bloggers and whatnot. Oh, this is dead, that's dead, Java's dead. No, nothing, no, nothing ever dies, but the one thing that we know is dead is yeah. perimeter-based security. That's right. That That's is right. now dead because right. people are infiltrating resources at every level up and That's down right. the stack. That's right. That is a core problem. You agree, right? Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. so how does that phenomenon get solved with the supercluster? Is it, is it a big data problem? Is that part of this, the chipset? It's a lot of, lot of noise around a what lot, is actually going on. That's right. That's right. So let me talk with the processor, server, and then broaden right. it out to the end-to-end -end stuff. When it comes to security, there are three aspects of security you care about the most. Number one is that protecting your data. Be it at rest or be it on the wire, you want to protect your data. And number two, you want to make sure that there are enough access controls incorporated in your system. And the third dimension is you want to make sure that you are staying compliant to whatever corporate standards you have set. It could be PCI DSS compliant, you know, so DOD compliance, whatever the compliance standards are, you want to stay current with those compliances. So what we have done with a platform like Supercluster is so that you can basically implement end-to-end -end security, be it data at rest, data on the wire, data in memory, as well as security controls. We're reducing the surface area of where attacks can, can occur. We have shrunk that out dramatically. And then we have built-in compliance tools out of the box on the system. So basically, every time the system is brought up, we run the compliance automatically on the system, on Supercluster. Automated. Automated. And we just tell you what are the violations with respect to compliance standards in yeah. your corporate standards. Can I poke at that a little bit? We, sure. we got some feedback from our community last night during the keynote I and Mark's see. keynote. They said, you know, there, there seems like kind of a little bit of a disconnect here. Larry said last night, we sell a lot of security, nobody turns it on. Uh, Mark said the same thing, but he said, well, we're going to turn it on in our cloud right. so you can feel comfortable. Right. You know, you're talking about doing this end to end. How do you, I mean, in essence, are you saying, we're never going to change on-prem mindset. They don't turn it on, so we're just going to turn it on for you in our engineered system, or is there some things that have to go on to convince customers to turn it on? It's a, it's a really good question. And so what we are doing as a default is turning on security end-to-end, -end, basically. Within the engineered system. Within systems. the engineered system on-prem. So essentially, the customer, as John said, has to turn off certain pieces of security if they don't want act, they don't, don't want those controls in there. Right, that's number one. So it makes it, the reason why customers find it uh, hard to get security on is that it is, it is really a gnarly science project, right? You have to know lots of insights of the different parts of the system, how they work together to turn on the security. We have books on this stuff. Right. We have taken the core <laughs> concepts of what's in the book and we have implemented that in the engineered system and doing security So what took it so long? What took you guys so long to do this? I mean, John Fallon's like, we had this in 2005. I mean, Spark's been around, some That's great right. security. That's right. Spark certainly is not dead, it's growing and thriving. Right. Spark, Unix Spark. Mm -hmm. sure. um, is this a key part of the strategy? I mean, Spark, and what is that role? Because you mentioned Spark with a K, right. which is the big data analytics right. in, mem right. Uh, right. in memory right. concept. Right. So you got in memory, right. not just persistent H uh, uh, SSD, right. in memory memory. That's right. That's right. So That's what's right. the dynamic between Spark, sure. Unix Spark? Right. Is it a platform? Does Spark with a case and on top of it, can you slice and dice that for got us? Got it, got it. So, so there's a lot of different different angles here. So let me start with uh, just the security angle on, on this point first, and then I'll go to the Spark question uh, in a minute, right? So with the advent of in-memory computing coming into play across the board, because of the analytics, real-time analytics requirements of our customers, so what we have looked at is that we have to redesign our systems to be different, to be acting different. So with the in-memory coming on board, now we can actually look at what are the core security concerns. So for example, accessing data in memory, like today, in a secure way, is nearly impossible. There is no standards available, there are no tools available for you to secure data in memory today. It's just impossible. So we have some software tools, every vendor software tools. The moment you put the software tools on in a production system, it slows down performance by 80 to 100 times. Yes, that's the overhead involved. Impossible. In that's overhead. Exactly, overheads. So essentially, applications run 80 times slower, 100 times slower. So if you think about a, you know, a, a bad job, which was taking a couple of hours time and you turn it on, now we are talking about days. It's impossible to basically have it, have it on. 
So what we took is that, that particular gnarly problem and said, we can actually do some changes right in the silicon, right in the processor, to assist you, to enable you to protect your memory, so that uh, only the owner gets access to the portion of the memory that belongs to it. So it's like, a, at a logical point, it's like a lock and key mechanism. So you have your, if you don't have the lock, if you don't have the key, you don't have access to the particular portion of the memory. So we now prevent access to memories uh, dramatically. And if you look at the security violations we have, Venom is in a good example, Heartbleed is a good example, which occurred in the last year or so. These are common memory violation related uh, security issues. Basically hackers found base into systems because of memory violations and got into the system. Now we absolutely completely prevent it. And the fun part is that Oracle database comes shipping with security turned on with this particular feature. That's the only way you get it. Right. We saw the Intel CEO on stage last night. Mark and him were talking about this partnership. How much, you know, Larry talked about, we're open. You, right. you need to be able to run your application on-prem in Absolutely. Oracle's cloud, but any cloud. Yep. How much do you have to work with the Intel teams to take some of the, the Spark learning and put that into x86 sure. so that I can do secure in memory sure. on, on x86? Sure, so, so as, uh, as Oracle, we are, we are obviously open. We work with, uh, work with other partners. So clearly Spark, uh, as in Spark C, is part of Oracle team. So there is a very tight cooperation between the software teams and the hardware teams, right? The Larry's philosophy sort of executed on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Where we basically in Redwood Shores and, 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 and in the Bay Area, sort of working together hand-in-hand -hand towards improving security end-to-end, -end, as well as other performance factors. Now, we do talk to Intel, we expose all of the opportunities that we have with our partners, and it's up to them, basically, to take up and, and run with it. So, okay. it's, it's, it it depends on them to basically how fast they want to implement Talk about the customers system. now. For customers who are concerned around sure. their future. Sure. They have Oracle as a big partner of them, and you get to a fortified position. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. You know, John and, and, and uh, Interdeep was talking about the middleware win you guys had with the cloud on-prem, really good position. Yeah. Customers are going to scratch their head, okay, where do I go from here? They want to bridge to the future. Yeah. So how do you talk about Supercluster in context to the future build-out plan? How would you share your thoughts Got as it. product developer? Like, Got hey, look, we're, build, we're working hard. Okay, that's, <laughs> not, I don't want to hear that answer, but more of specific. This is the roadmap. Connect the dots to the future Got for the it. customer. That's a great question. So Supercluster, first of all, is a plot engineering system platform which is, which is great to run Oracle database applications all tied together. So, you know, customers have talked about security is a big concern, performance is a big concern, availability is a big concern. So, number one, on the availability side, we have no single point of failure on the platform. So essentially, you can run all components of your application all on the same stack. The fun part you get is that, from a security standpoint, you can actually implement your end-to-end -end security on a single platform. Imagine that, right? Your web stack, your middleware stack, your application stack, database stack, all sitting in the same platform where you can actually encrypt and, and implement security end to end on the same platform. So that's a massive, massive differentiation value add for, for customers to basically get yeah. from. It. John laid out an interesting vision yesterday. He was saying, look, you know, in sort of a perfect world, perfect data center world, he said, look, uh, everything's in memory. I do very few reads. It's yep. just, you know, it's just writes. Right. And, and everything is high speed, InfiniBand, 100 gig connections. Yeah. That would put you guys squarely in the crosshairs of being a network vendor and being a storage vendor. Do you expect that we'll see you guys talking about really disrupting storage and networking as well because of, you know, we're moving into a very data-centric world. IoT right. is going to be very data-centric, right. mobile right. data-centric, right. analytics. Right. Do we expect you're going to disrupt those markets as well or do you feel comfortable where you are? So what we, what we look forward is basically customers want simpler, easier building blocks to solve their larger problems. They do not want to be the integrators for us at the end of the day. So that's been our philosophy for quite some time. What they're looking for is platforms. Platforms to run databases, platforms to run applications, platform to run the web tier. That's what they're looking for, platforms, right? And so we have to look ourselves as a platform provider that they can run a range of applications. Customers shouldn't have to worry about what is the speed of the connectivity between my storage node and my compute node? How many, how many blocks, building blocks do I need to have now? You don't have to, 
they have to worry about, hey, I want to solve my ERP problem. I want to solve my analytics problem, right? That's what they need to be thinking about. And Oracle is driving towards integrating these components together in a way to address specific issues of customers, opportunity customers. Talk about the end-to-end -end security game, because what we were saying on the opening yesterday, that this is a game changer, because yeah. you know, automating and orchestration are principles of DevOps in the cloud, and yeah. we'd love to hear that. Yeah. It's a middleware concept as well. But when you actually automate a lot of these functions around security, because there is no perimeter, this is so profound right now, it's a big problem that no one really has a solution for, in my sure, opinion, sure. that you can actually enable an end-to-end -end security model. Right. It sounds almost too good to be true. So the question is, is that what does it mean for the customer? What do you guys provide specifically that, that's, that provides that? So, so again, the CXO sitting there saying, okay, I got to put out the new platform. Yeah, shadow IT with big data, it's an app-driven economy. I yeah. get that, we're hiring developers. A lot of POCs and yeah. business cases being established sure. in the cloud, sure, sure, sure. but then they got to get operationalized. Absolutely. The next question is, hey, great success. Meet my security audit guy. Right. And got everything it. slows down to a got halt. It. Got it. That is a big problem. Yeah. How do you solve that problem? Right, so this is kind of where the compliance mechanism comes into play. Okay, so, you know, implementing, how do I implement the security standards? And what happens is that, you know, as time goes by, I patch this, I change that, I, and I slowly start deviating from my security compliance mechanisms. I don't have a clear cut mechanism to make sure that my entire data center is staying, with, staying compliant as I change my infrastructure, right? This is exactly why we said, we're going to build in compliance into the platform. You basically check for compliance, and you don't have to run any compliance. We run the compliance for you, and we just tell you what the deviations are. And let's say you have a deviation in your system. We tell you, hey, if you allow us, we will actually correct the deviation for you as we go forward on this one, right? So that's kind of the evolution, that change that we have done on the platform. Okay, so the next, next question is, okay, it's, an, it's a workload specific outcome driven economy now. Sure. Hey, this app runs here, yeah. that comes down from the top of the yeah. stack. How do you guys integrate with those developers? Because they're out there, they don't, they're like DevOps, they don't want to know the plumbing that's chip, right. down the chip level. Right. And software on the silicon is a real advancement in that performance piece. Sure, sure. So as a person who's workload specific, right. I don't really care what's right, going on right. in the covers. Right, right. What do you say to that person? So this is, this is a good question. So essentially what we've done with the software in silicon, there are sort of three pieces of software in silicon which we did. Right. One was security in silicon, which is where I talked about the memory protection, the cryptographic protection for, for the at, at rest at, at, at network. So that's, a, that's one piece. The second piece is, is around SQL in silicon. Right, so what that means is that we have taken the core in-memory functions of the database and we have moved that directly into the silicon. So we talk about you know, scans, which is yeah, common, yeah. joins, which are common, filters, right? And you were talking about a Spark on Spark, right, uh, some time back. <clears throat> and so what we have done is basically taken those core SQL and silicon functions, the in-memory analytics of functions, and we are exposing that to third-party developers and application providers. And we have done an integration with Spark, Spark as in Spark K, uh, so that you can actually run your big data analytics on this platform, runs just like just like the same application runs the same way. It just runs a lot. You lot, don't lot slow faster. that down. You accelerate it's, that. It's, it's, a, it's a big deal. It's I mean when VMware first came out, and then Intel incorporated Intel or you know Intel VT, which accelerated virtualization. Yeah. Market exploded. Doing right. doing some of those things in silicon that are very common. It's a really big deal. Absolutely, absolutely. And the third piece we just uh, we, we haven't talked about is the capacity. So as you move more and more data in memory, you do more and more big data stuff in memory. You want to basically compress your footprint in memory. So we have a decompression algorithm in the silicon. Right, so that you can actually keep the data compressed in memory, and then decompress it on the fly, fly to process it stuff. All again, fairly innovative, completely different, don't exist in the industry at this point of time. And because of those differentiations, we can actually derive different forms of service and engineered system to give you sort of the, the uh, needs on the analytics space, OLTP space, or the operational. Ganesh, thanks space. so much for sharing your insight here on theCUBE. You know, we're like car geeks and technology. We want to look under the hood, and sure. we're super excited about the super cluster and the M7. John Fowler, again, was great, great yesterday. Sure. I'll give you the final word. Share with the folks watching, because this is, this is a coming out for all your developers, releasing the new products. Yeah. What are they going to see here at Oracle? What's the main message that you'd like to share with folks here got that you're got super excited about? Got got so with the new platforms, what we have, number one, is that we have done all the usual stuff. Increased performance by about two and a half to three X on a processor to processor basis. You know, we have 20 world record benchmarks. We, we have doubled the number of cores, we quadrupled the crash sizes. We have done all of that big leap 
number one. But on top of it, we have done a big revolutionary thing of actually integrating software functions into silicon. We talked about security, I talked about capacity, and I talked about basically SQL and analytics in silicon, right? That's kind of a revolutionary thing which sort of sets a new base for running Oracle database, Java middleware, and any enterprise applications coming from a customer base, from Oracle, or from a third party vendor. More cores, more performance, certainly better uh, environment for the customer securely, yeah. Yeah. and a competitive advantage for Oracle. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. Ginez, thanks for joining us. This is theCUBE, we're live in San Francisco on Howard Street. We'll be here for the next two days, live, live wall-to-wall wall coverage in theCUBE. We'll be right back with more after this short break.